Let's move on to finding the total surface matrix for the entire truss structure and we'll do that with an example. So, so far we have learned that the equation for a global surface matrix of a truss element is something like this. This is the global stiffness matrix of a single truss element and this is the global nodal forces and this is the global nodal displacements. But a truss has more than one element. It has several bars and elements. So we need to find a stiffness matrix or a global stiffness matrix like this for every single element in the truss and then merge them in a big stiffness, uh, in a big stiffness matrix to make the total stiffness matrix for the entire structure. And that's what we'll be covering through an example in this lecture. Let's assume we have a three bar truss, a very simple one in here. I have discretized it into three elements, element one, element two, and element three. And we have three nodes, node one, node two, and node three. At node two, I have a force in the y direction, but negative y direction of 100 newtons applied and the angles between the bars is 60 degrees. So this is also 60 degrees and this is also 60 degrees. So I can, I'm gonna assume these numbers, all the bars at length L, all the bars have the cross section area of uh, 10 or one meter squared. Young's modulus of 200 gigapascals and uh, nu of 0.3, which is Poisson ratio. One thing I know I will need for the stiffest matrix of a single truss element is Ea over L, so let's calculate that because it's constant for all the elements. 200 gigapascals is 2 times to the 10 to the 11, and uh, A is 10 to the minus 2 meters squared, and L is 1, so it gives me this for Ea over L. 2 times 10 to the 9 newton per meter. And we also know that um, for a single element, the local coordinate system is always like this, 2 times 10 to the 9, which is A over L, and a 4 by 4 local surface matrix. And the global surface matrix is shown in red in here. So let's find the global system a global surface matrix for each element. We have three elements. Let's go back. We have one, two, three elements. And each, each one is at a uh, certain theta with respect to the global coordinate system. So here, if we put the global coordinate system there, it's a 60 degree rotation angle. If you put um, another one here for the second element, we could say that it is at this angle, which is 300 or also minus 60. And for the uh, third element, it's going to be zero because it's in the same direction of x. So theta 1 is 60, theta 2 is either 300 or minus 60, and theta 3 is at 0. You put those, uh, those angles here in this table, 60, 300, and 0, and find a cosine and sine for each of the angles, and then we can find the cos squared and sine squared and cos and sine because those are the elements that we need to make up the global surface matrix for every element and the truss. And we can do this with a computer program or even Excel if you want to do that uh, because usually the angles are hard to find the cos and sine and then take them to the second power. After you do that we're ready to uh, make the global surface matrix for each of the single or individual elements in a truss. So I have done it here. This is for the first element. This one is the for 
second element and this is the global surface matrix for the third element. As you can see, I have factored out the 2 times 10 to the 9 from all of the matrices. And these are basically um, the elements from this matrix per element. So for element 1, I have cosine, cosine, or cos squared, cosine, minus cos squared, minus cosine, cosine, sine squared, on and on. And the same for element 2 and for element 3. And we get, we get to these global stiffness matrices. So we get three global stiffness matrices because we have three elements. Now we have to use these three global surface matrices to make the total surface matrix of our truss. So we have three nodes in our truss, right? And each node has two degrees of freedom. So we'll end up with a six by six matrix as I've shown in here. By just typical representation of the components of this six by six surface matrix, K11, K21, K31, on and on until K66. So this is what we're gonna make in the next step. Find each of these components for the global or the total surface matrix of the truss. And I have put these D1, X, D1, Y notations on top of the, uh, the columns and on the right side of the rows to make it easy for me to explain how to make the total surface matrix from the three global surface matrices, matrices that we found so far. So step one, we'll take a look at the first element. This is the global surface matrix for the first element and I have put the nodes which are attached to the first element. There's node one which has its own displacements in x and y direction and I have node two which has its own displacements in x and y directions and on the Right side of the rows, I've also put that there. For the total surface matrix, I have D1x, D1y, D2x, D2y, D3x, D3y, and the same for the rows. But as you can see, in the global surface matrix for the first element, there is no D3x or D3y. So the only portion of the total surface matrix that I can fill with the matrix I've shown here is the one that I have put in, on, under or inside this square or rectangle. So I just put everything that I see in this element or in this matrix in this portion of the total surface matrix, a four by four matrix. And I can um, divide that into four portions. Let me change the color of the pen. So if I divide it, I can have a four two by two matrices. This portion comes here, and if I can divide that here too, that portion comes here, and this portion comes here, then we have the third quarter and then the fourth quarter goes there. Nothing special is happening here right now. It's just transferring the numbers from one matrix to another matrix. Now moving on, moving on to the next uh, element, element two. Now I have D2X, D2Y, D3X, D3Y. And how do I know that? Let me just go back to the first slide that I showed here. The second element is this one. And the two nodes are node two and node 3 here. So I know that for the second element I have the displacements and forces for node 2 and node 3 and node 1 is not attached to element 2. So if I move back to step 2 then I can write D2x, D2y, D3x, D3y on top of the columns and the same on the right side of the rows. Now this portion uh, uh, this matrix covers this portion of the total surface matrix as I've shown with this rectangle. Let me divide that into four two by twos again. This is one, this is two, this is three and four. 
And if I divide this two into four two by twos, one, two, three, four. Now from step one here, this portion, which is the fourth portion of the uh, global coordinate system for element one, has already put some numbers inside the first portion of the global surface matrix of element two. So I already have some numbers. And what I do is basically add the two numbers together. I had 0.25 from before, and I have 0.25 in here. Just add them. I had 0.433 from before, and I have minus 0.433 from before. I put them together, it's going to go to zero. The same is here, and then 0.75 plus 0.75, this number goes there. But the rest of the uh, portions or quarters of this matrix did not have initial values. So what I do is that I basically copy these numbers in the corresponding quarters in the total surface matrix. And again, how do I know that? I look at this column and these rows, D3x, D3y, D2x, D2y, which means D3x, this column, and D3y is this column, D2x and D2y is this column. So it's create, it occupies this portion of the matrix. Then I have D2x, D2y, D3x, D3y. I have D2x, D2y, D3x, D3y. So I put them in here. And then the fourth portion is only for the third node. So I just put them there. Lastly, I have to put in the values for the third uh, stiffest matrix. Now I divide this into four two by twos. One, two, three, and four. So this becomes one, two, three, four. Why? Because D1x and D1y, D1x and D1y are the rows and columns. So that would be here. D1x, D1y columns, D1x, D1y rows that fill up that portion of the stiffest matrix. Then I have D3x, D3y, D1x, D1y, which will be this portion. The columns are D3x, D3y, D1x, D1y. And then I have D1x, D1y for the third portion of columns, and then D3x and D3y for the rows of the third portion, which correspond to this point. And then again, the fourth portion is D3x, D3y, D3x, D3y, which come from this portion of the stiffest matrix. Again, first quarter and the fourth quarter previously filled with some numbers. So all I do is just add those numbers with numbers from this third global surface matrix. So global surface matrix for the third element. But quarters two and quarter three were not filled with any numbers. So they just get the numbers from this matrix. So what I have right now is a four by four matrix, or actually a six by six matrix, that corresponds to the total surface matrix for the truss structure that we showed in the first slide. Let me just go back to the first slide again. So this stiffest, uh, this truss structure that we showed here has its own global or total surface matrix as shown in here. And we don't put the hat there anymore because it is uh, defined in the global uh, coordinate system. And the numbers again came from the individual uh, global surface matrices of the elements.